so compromises must be made. One way of compromising, which has come to dominate music theory, is to divide the octave up into an equal number of tones. In this tuning, we decide that the ratio between each and every semitone is to be the same. So the ratio between these two frequencies is R. Between these two, this is a whole tone, so the ratio would be R squared. These two frequencies here constitute four semitones, so the ratio would be R to the four. And if there are to be 12 tones within an octave, this is justified by our work with stacking fifths, then we would require r to the 12 is equal to 2. So this gives the ratio between any two frequencies is 2 to the power of 1 12th. With this tuning, every interval that is approximately, say, a fifth, is approximately a fifth in the exact same way. Every interval that is approximately a major third is approximately a major third in the exact same way. So this tuning allows every key to be treated in the same way and to sound the same, at least as far as the ratios between pitches are concerned. As we saw before, if the ratio between semitones is 2 to the 1 12th and we define a cent to be 1 1 hundredth of a semitone in this sense, 2 to the power of 1 12th is 1, ten, 1 cent to the power of 100, then 1 cent is the hundredth root of 2 to the 1 12th, so 2 to the power of 1 over 1200. So if we wanted to know how many cents a given interval corresponded to, say for instance uh, the ratio 5 to 4, or the factor 5 over 4, how many cents does this equal? Well we can set up this equation. 5 over 4 must be equal to 1 cent, 2 to the power of 1 over 1200, multiplied by itself c times. Of course c doesn't need to be an integer here, but more precisely 2 to the power of 1 over 1200 raised to the power of c. And then we can solve for this exponent c using logarithms. Taking natural logarithm of, of each side gives ln of 5 over 4 is ln of 2 to the power of c over 1200. By the property of logarithms that exponent can come down in front and you're left with this expression here. The number of cents, which of course doesn't need to be an integer, is 1200 times ln of 5 over 4 divided by ln of 2. Now 5 over 4, I just picked that because we've been talking about it for a bit. But this ratio here really could be any two frequencies. Say you had a frequency B and a frequency A, and you were wondering what was the number of cents between them? Voila, here it is. The really nice fortuitous thing about the equal tempered scale is that when you compare the ratios you get in the equal tempered scale with the corresponding ratios you'd get from, say, 5 limit tuning, they're really not that different, maybe off by 15, maybe 13 cents, and some a lot less than that. Let's see an example. So a perfect fifth corresponds to a factor of 3 over 2. An equal tempered fifth corresponds to 7 semitones, so 2 to the 1 12th to the power of 7, or 2 to the power of 7 over 12. What's the difference between these two in cents? The fifth you get from the harmonic series and the fifth you get from the equal tempered scale. Well, let's just plug it into our formula. C is 1200 ln of 3 halves, the perfect fifth, divided by 2 to the 7 twelfths, the equal tempered fifth, all divided by ln 2. You can work this out, and you get approximately 1.96. So the perfect fifth is about 2 cents sharper than the equal tempered fifth. This table here in the Wikipedia article on 12 tone equal temperament lays it all out pretty nicely. You can see that the difference between just intonation and equal temperament is at most about 17 and a half cents, which is not nothing, uh, but many of the intervals are less than that. Now this equal tempered scale certainly does suit the needs of many musicians and composers, but of course not everybody. It depends on what you want to do. Some might look at some of these intervals, for example, the major third, the minor sixth, the major sixth, and say, you know what, those approximations really aren't that great. So the door is certainly open to creating all sorts of different scales. The possibilities are really endless. We haven't seen the details, really, of five limit tuning or seven lim limit tuning, etc. But those aren't the only possibilities. Remember how we've really been privileging the octave and, in particular, the interval of the fifth? Some people have experimented with building scales which really don't care that much about the octave. Maybe they take a wider or a narrower interval and decide to break that up into an equal number of intervals. If you're curious about this, you can look up the scales of Wendy Carlos or the Bull and Pierce scales. Really, the possibilities are endless. 
The last thing I want to talk about provides even further justification for why there are 12 notes in the chromatic scale commonly. Our current justification is that after the 12th iteration of stacking fifths, we begin to produce tones that are close to tones that we already have. But we do still get different tones after all, so you might ask, why do we discard those new tones so readily? What would happen if we kept stacking fifths consecutively? Let's suppose we want to build an equal tempered scale, that is, the ratio between any two successive pitches is the same, and we want to keep octaves perfect and fifths approximately perfect. We've already seen that stacking 12 fifths gives approximately 7 octaves. In other words, 3 halves to the power of 12 is approximately 2 to the 7. But are there integers other than 12 and 7 which make this approximation even more accurate? Well, this approximate equation can be rearranged by taking the natural logarithm of both sides. By the property of logarithms, the exponents can come down in front which can be rearranged as m over k is approximately equal to the ln of 3 over 2 divided by the ln of 2. And we're wondering, can we find integers m and k that approximate this quantity, ln of 3 over 2 over ln of 2, really, really well? In particular, we'll say that a good approximation is one for which any better approximation must have a larger denominator. In this context, since the denominator k is the number of stacked approximate fifths, looking for a good approximation with a relatively small denominator means we're not interested in stacking a large number of approximate fifths when we could get a better approximation by using fewer fifths. Now this quantity, which we wish to approximate, ln of 3 over 2 over ln of 2, is an irrational number. In fact, this is really just a rephrasing of the fact that 3 over 2 to the power of k is not equal to 2 to the power of m for any k and m. It's approximately equal to 0 0.5849625, but we can write this as a continued fraction. To set about writing this as a continued fraction, let's first rewrite it as 0 plus 0 0.5849625. Yes, it's silly to add the zero. I'm doing that just so if you decide to look up continued fractions, uh, this will look familiar to the first images you see when you look at pictures, uh, when you look at continued fractions. Okay, so this 0 0.5849625, uh, it's less than one, so let's choose to write it as one over a, where a is gonna be some number bigger than one. We can find a by just reciprocating the 0 0.5849625. So we find a is about 1.7095113. Okay, so now we can write this like this. And then we can just iterate this procedure. So now we will take the 1.7095113 in the denominator, write it as 1 plus 0 0.7095113, and this quantity, less than 1, we'll write as 1 over some quantity bigger than 1. We find that quantity to be one point, approximately 1.409, 4208, so now we can uh, write the uh, expression like this. And then we just keep going and going and going. I hope it's clear that we could continue this process indefinitely. Because this quantity is irrational, it will, it will never end. This is the continued fraction expansion for ln of 3 over 2 over ln of 2. Now we can get approximations to this irrational quantity by truncating this procedure at any time. So for instance, if we didn't go any further after this point, then we would get that this is approximately equal to 1 over 1. If we truncated it after this point and didn't do any of these, then we would get that this is approximately 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1. These can be a bit of a pain to work out, especially the higher you go, although there is a recursion relation which makes it much, much easier, but I'll leave that for you to look into. However, if we just look at a few more better and better approximations, we get the following. Now these approximations are called convergence, and there's a theorem that says that these convergence in, of these continued fractions are good approximations in that any better approximation is going to have a larger denominator. So these are precisely what we're after if we're trying to build 
a equally tempered scale that preserves the octaves and almost preserves the perfect fifths. So right here you see this fourth convergent, 7 over 12. This corresponds precisely to the fact that 12 stacked fifths is approximately 7 octaves. This one, 24 over 41, would give rise to, for instance, a 41 tone equal tempered scale. This is saying that 41 approximate stacked fifths is approximately 24 octaves. You could also construct a 53 tone equal tempered scale. And there are works written in such scales. These aren't purely academic exercises. This does give a little bit more justification, I think, for why we've commonly stuck with 12 tones in an equally tempered scale. We see that to get a significantly better approximation uh, than 12 approximate fifths equaling approximate, uh, 7 octaves, we would have to go to 41 tones. So that procedure of stacking uh, fifths and seeing when we might come back approximately close to the octave, had we kept iterating that, we would find that we wouldn't really come back any closer to the octave after the 12th step until we got to the 41st step. But the mathematics here, these continued fractions, you could use these to construct, construct scales in other ways as well. You might decide, rather than privileging the octave and the perfect fifth, that you privilege the major third and the minor sixth or something. And you could look at the continued fraction expansion for the irrational quantity that would result and try to see what kinds of convergence you get and use those to build scales. So there's really a whole host of directions you could go in and try to construct some interesting scales. What will remain true is that scales constructed in this way, or really any way, will have some strengths and some weaknesses. They will approximate some intervals occurring in the harmonic series really, really well, and not approximate others that well. But that's part of what makes music and music theory so compelling.